Hello, history enthusiasts, time travelers, and knowledge seekers. Welcome to another journey back in time here on Backdrop History. Introduction The Aztec civilization, also known as the Mexica civilization, stands as one of the most remarkable and influential societies in Mesoamerican history. Flourishing between the 14th and 16th centuries, the Aztecs created a powerful empire that spanned a vast territory in present-day Mexico. This account aims to delve into the rich tapestry of the Aztec civilization, exploring its origins, political structure, social organization, religious beliefs, cultural achievements, and eventual encounter with European colonizers. Chapter 1, Origins and Migration the origins of the Aztec civilization are deeply rooted in the mythical narratives and historical accounts passed down through generations. According to Aztec mythology, the Mexica people originated from a legendary homeland known as Aztlan. Aztlan was envisioned as a place of abundance and prosperity, often described as an island or a region surrounded by water. It is important to note that Aztlan, as described in mythology, does not correspond to a specific geographical location but rather serves as a symbolic starting point for the Mexica people's journey. The Aztec migration, also known as the Aztlan migration, began when the Mexica people received a divine prophecy from their patron deity, Huitzilopochtli. The prophecy foretold their destined homeland, a place where they would establish a great civilization. Inspired by this vision and under the guidance of their deity, the Mexica embarked on a lengthy and arduous journey in search of their promised land. The migration from Aztlan to the Valley of Mexico is believed to have taken place over several generations. The exact timeline and routes taken during the migration remain a subject of debate among historians, as the available sources often mix mythological elements with historical events. However, it is generally agreed that the migration covered a vast expanse of territory, with the Mexica people moving through different regions of central Mexico. Throughout their migration, the Mexica encountered various challenges and hardships. They faced hostile encounters with other indigenous groups, natural obstacles, and the constant need for resources and sustenance. These struggles, combined with the need to adapt to different environments, contributed to the formation of their resilient and adaptable character. After years of wandering, the Mexica eventually arrived in the Valley of Mexico, a region characterized by a network of interconnected lakes, fertile lands, and a temperate climate. It was in this picturesque setting that they encountered the large lake of Texcoco, where they decided to settle on an island. This island, situated in the middle of Lake Texcoco, would later become the site of their magnificent capital city, Tenochtitlan. The establishment of Tenochtitlan marked a significant turning point in the history of the Aztec civilization. The Mexica people, now known as the Aztecs, had found their promised land and began to lay the foundations of a grand metropolis. They constructed canals, causeways, and chinampas, artificial islands, to facilitate trade, agriculture, and transportation. The strategic location of Tenochtitlan on the lake provided natural defenses against potential enemies and offered a thriving environment for their burgeoning civilization. The early years in the Valley of Mexico were characterized by a struggle for survival and the need to form alliances with neighboring city-states. The Aztecs, recognizing the importance of securing their position in a highly competitive region, entered into various political and military agreements with other indigenous groups. These alliances allowed them to expand their influence, establish trade networks, and strengthen their position as a dominant force in the area. Chapter 2 The Triple Alliance, a powerful confederation in the Aztec Empire. Under the leadership of their revered rulers, known as Tilatoni, the Aztecs forged a powerful confederation known as the Triple Alliance, which played a crucial role in the rise and dominance of the Aztec Empire. This alliance, also referred to as the Aztec Confederacy, brought together three major city-states, Tenochtitlan, Texcoco, and Tlacopan. 
Together, they coordinated military campaigns, expanded their territorial reach, and established a vast network of tributary states that ensured their dominance over Mesoamerica. The formation of the Triple Alliance was a strategic move aimed at consolidating power and resources in the region. It represented a significant shift in Aztec politics, transforming the city-state of Tenochtitlan into a dominant force capable of exerting control over its neighboring rivals. The alliance was built on a foundation of mutual benefit and shared goals, as each city-state brought its unique strengths and contributions to the confederation. Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire, provided the driving force behind the Triple Alliance. It was the seat of power and home to the ruling elite. Tenochtitlan's military might, strategic location, and administrative expertise made it the de facto leader of the confederation. Its Tilatoni, or emperor, held the highest authority within the alliance, wielding significant political and religious power over the member city-states. Texcoco, another major city-state, was known for its intellectual and cultural achievements. It boasted a rich tradition of poetry, arts, and scholarship. Texcoco's contribution to the alliance lay in its intellectual prowess, providing the confederation with a strong base of knowledge and cultural refinement. Additionally, Texcoco possessed a well-organized bureaucracy and efficient administrative system, which greatly facilitated the management of the confederation's affairs. Tlacopan, though not as influential as Tenochtitlan or Texcoco, played a crucial role in the Triple Alliance. Situated in a strategic location near Lake Texcoco, Tlacopan provided military support and served as a bridge between the other two city-states. Tlacopan's alliance with Tenochtitlan and Texcoco lent the Triple Alliance a geographical advantage, strengthening its ability to launch military campaigns and control key trade routes. The Triple Alliance operated on a system of military cooperation and tribute. Together, the three city-states engaged in joint military campaigns, enabling them to conquer and subdue rival city-states throughout Mesoamerica. Through military victories, the Alliance expanded its territorial boundaries, amassing a vast empire that stretched from the Gulf Coast to the Pacific Ocean and as far south as present-day Guatemala. Tribute played a crucial role in the functioning of the Triple Alliance. Conquered regions and city-states were required to pay tribute to the Aztec Empire, providing resources, goods, and labor. This tribute system ensured a constant flow of wealth and resources into the Confederation, fueling its economic and political stability. Tribute was not only an economic mechanism but also a means of asserting dominance and solidifying the Aztec Empire's control over its vast territories. The Triple Alliance also maintained a vast network of tributary states, known as the Aztec Tributary Empire. These states, though technically independent, were subject to Aztec control and required to pay tribute. The tributary empire allowed the Aztecs to exert influence over distant regions, extending their political reach and maintaining stability throughout their vast empire. Chapter 3, Political Structure, A Complex Hierarchy in the Aztec Empire The Aztec political system was characterized by a hierarchical structure that centralized power in the hands of the ruling elite. At the pinnacle of this system stood the Tilatoni, the emperor, who held absolute authority and was considered a divine figure embodying the will of the gods. The political structure of the Aztecs was carefully crafted to maintain social order, ensure the loyalty of subjects, and facilitate the efficient governance of the empire. The Tilatoni, as the supreme ruler, exercised complete control over all aspects of Aztec society, including politics, religion, and military affairs. They were responsible for maintaining cosmic harmony, preserving the balance between the earthly realm and the divine. The Tilatoni's role was not only political but also religious, as they played a vital role in carrying out rituals and ceremonies dedicated to the gods. 
Advising the Tilatoni was a council composed of nobles and high-ranking officials. This council, known as the Council of Four, included individuals selected based on their expertise, experience, and loyalty to the emperor. These advisors provided counsel on matters of governance, policy decisions, and the administration of the empire. The council acted as a collective voice, offering guidance and helping to shape the direction of the empire under the Tilatoni's rule. Beneath the Tilatoni and the council were regional governors known as Tlatkani, who served as representatives of the emperor in various provinces and territories. The Tlatkani were responsible for enforcing imperial policies, collecting tribute, maintaining order, and reporting directly to the Tilatoni. They possessed considerable authority within their respective regions and were tasked with upholding the emperor's will and ensuring loyalty from the local nobility and commoners. At the local level, the administration was carried out by Kalpiksk, local administrators appointed by the Tilatoni or regional governors. The Kalpiks governed individual city-states, overseeing day-to-day -day affairs, managing public works, and resolving disputes within their jurisdictions. They were responsible for upholding imperial law, collecting tribute, and implementing policies handed down from higher authorities. The Aztecs employed a system of tribute to maintain the flow of resources and goods throughout their empire. Tribute was collected from conquered territories and subjected city-states. This system required tribute-paying regions to provide resources such as food, textiles, precious metals, and other valuable goods to the central government. Tribute served multiple purposes, including sustaining the ruling elite, supporting the military, and maintaining the economic stability of the empire. Social mobility within the political structure of the Aztec Empire was limited but not impossible. Birth and nobility played significant roles in determining one's position within the hierarchy. However, individuals who demonstrated exceptional military prowess, intelligence, or skills could rise through the ranks and earn prestige and positions of influence. Chapter 4, Social Organization, Hierarchies and Divisions in Aztec Society Aztec society was characterized by a highly stratified structure that delineated clear divisions among its members. The social hierarchy encompassed nobles, commoners, and slaves, each occupying distinct roles and enjoying varying degrees of privileges and rights. This social organization played a crucial role in defining the rights, responsibilities, and opportunities available to individuals within Aztec society. At the apex of Aztec society were the nobles, who held positions of power and authority. The noble class included members of the royal family, high-ranking officials, and distinguished warriors. Nobles enjoyed numerous privileges such as land ownership, access to education, and participation in religious and political ceremonies. They were entrusted with administrative duties, advising the Tilatoni, emperor, and contributing to the governance of the empire. The nobles played a significant role in shaping the cultural and political landscape of Aztec society. Below the nobles were the commoners, who constituted the majority of the population. Commoners engaged in various occupations, including farming, artisanal work, and military service. Farmers formed the backbone of the Aztec economy, cultivating the fertile lands in the Valley of Mexico and producing food for both sustenance and tribute. Artisans, such as craftsmen and weavers, specialized in the production of goods and commodities, contributing to the economic prosperity of the empire. Some commoners also served in the military, participating in campaigns of conquest and defense. Within the commoner class, there were further distinctions based on occupation and wealth. Skilled artisans and successful merchants often enjoyed higher social standing and greater economic opportunities compared to those engaged in manual labor or less prestigious trades. However, upward social mobility was possible for commoners who demonstrated exceptional skills, achieved military success, or accumulated wealth. 
Slavery existed within Aztec society, although it differed from the chattel slavery commonly associated with European colonization. Slaves in Aztec society were primarily individuals who had fallen into debt, prisoners of war, or individuals sentenced to servitude as punishment for crimes. Slavery in the Aztec Empire was not necessarily a lifelong condition, as slaves could be ransomed, freed, or gain their freedom through acts of valor or as a reward for loyal service. Despite this, slaves lacked many fundamental rights and were considered the property of their owners, who had control over their labor and personal lives. The social organization of Aztec society was not solely based on wealth and occupation but was also deeply intertwined with religious beliefs and ancestral heritage. Bloodline and lineage played a significant role in determining an individual's social status and opportunities. Noble lineage, particularly tracing descent from the ruling family, bestowed high prestige and privileges upon individuals, while commoners with noble ancestry might be granted higher social standing and access to certain benefits. Education also played a crucial role in social organization. Nobles and elite members of Aztec society had access to formal education and were trained in various fields, including religion, history, and administration. Commoners, on the other hand, received practical education within their respective trades and occupations. Education was not universally accessible, but there were exceptions where exceptional commoners could gain access to higher learning through exceptional talent or sponsorship by nobles. Chapter 5, Religion and Cosmology, The Sacred Beliefs of the Aztec Civilization Religion held a paramount position in the lives of the Aztec people, permeating every aspect of their society, culture, and worldview. The Aztecs developed a complex and intricate religious system, which revolved around a vast pantheon of gods and goddesses, elaborate rituals, and a deeply ingrained belief in cyclical cosmology. Their religious practices and cosmological beliefs were integral to their understanding of the world and their place within it. At the core of the Aztec religious pantheon stood Huitzilopochtli, the chief deity and the patron god of the Aztecs. Huitzilopochtli was revered as the god of war, the sun, and the patron of the Aztec capital, Tenochtitlan. He symbolized the strength, vitality, and protective power of the Aztec Empire. The reverence for Huitzilopochtli was deeply ingrained in Aztec society, with grand temples dedicated to his worship and regular rituals performed to honor him. The Aztec pantheon encompassed a multitude of gods and goddesses, each associated with various aspects of nature, human activities, and cosmic forces. Among the prominent deities were Tlaloc, the rain god, Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god associated with creation and knowledge, Tezcatlipoca, the god of destiny and sorcery, and Zyptotec, the god of spring, fertility, and agricultural renewal. These deities represented the diverse facets of the natural world and the Aztecs' interactions with it. To maintain a harmonious relationship with the gods, the Aztecs engaged in elaborate rituals and ceremonies. These rituals involved offerings, prayers, music, dance, and processions. The Aztecs believed that their actions had a direct impact on the balance of the natural and supernatural realms. They sought to appease the gods through sacrifices and offerings, ensuring the gods' favor and the continued prosperity of their society. Human sacrifice was an integral part of Aztec religious practice, driven by the belief that the gods required blood and human life to sustain the cosmic order. Human sacrifices were conducted on a grand scale, often during important ceremonies and festivals. The victims, chosen from war captives, slaves, or individuals specifically selected for sacrifice, were ritually slain as offerings to the gods. These sacrificial rituals were seen as essential for the Aztecs to maintain the favor of the gods and prevent cosmic upheaval. The Aztecs' cosmological beliefs were rooted in the concept of cyclical time and the recurring eras of creation and destruction. They believed that the world had undergone four previous ages or suns, 
each ending in cataclysmic events such as floods, fires, or hurricanes. These catastrophic events resulted in the destruction of the world and the subsequent creation of a new era. The current era, the fifth sun, was believed to be presided over by the god Tonitiu, the sun god. The Aztecs perceived themselves as living in a precarious era, marked by the constant struggle to maintain cosmic balance and avoid the potential cataclysms that threatened their existence. Rituals and sacrifices were seen as crucial in appeasing the gods and ensuring the continued renewal of the world. Religious ceremonies and beliefs were deeply intertwined with the daily lives of the Aztec people. The Aztecs practiced divination, seeking guidance from priests and oracles to make important decisions or interpret omens. Religion permeated their art, architecture, literature, and even their agricultural practices. The temples and pyramids of Tenochtitlan stood as grand symbols of their religious devotion and the central role of the gods in their lives. Chapter 6, Cultural Achievements, The Rich Legacy of Aztec Art, Architecture, and Literature The Aztec civilization left an indelible mark on Mesoamerican history through its remarkable cultural achievements, which encompassed art, architecture, and literature. The Aztecs developed a unique and distinctive artistic style characterized by intricate stone carvings, vibrant murals, and exquisite pottery. Their architectural prowess is exemplified by the awe-inspiring structures of Tenochtitlan, while their sophisticated writing system, known as Nahuatl, documented their history, traditions, and worldview. Aztec art was a rich expression of their religious beliefs, social practices, and the natural world. The Aztecs excelled in stone sculpture, carving intricate and detailed designs that adorned temples, buildings, and monumental structures. Their stone sculptures featured mythological figures, deities, and historical events, providing insights into their religious cosmology and historical narratives. These sculptures often showcased a harmonious blend of human and animal forms, reflecting the Aztecs' reverence for nature and their belief in the interconnectedness of all living beings. The Aztecs were also renowned for their vibrant murals, which adorned the walls of temples, palaces, and important civic structures. These murals depicted scenes from mythology, religious ceremonies, and daily life, capturing the vibrant colors, intricate patterns, and elaborate storytelling of the Aztec culture. Through their murals, the Aztecs conveyed their cosmological beliefs, the rituals they practiced, and their connection to the divine realm. In addition to sculpture and murals, the Aztecs excelled in pottery making. Their ceramics featured intricate designs, ranging from geometric patterns to representations of animals, plants, and mythological creatures. Aztec pottery served both practical and artistic purposes, as it was used for storage, cooking, and ceremonial offerings. The craftsmanship and artistic finesse displayed in their pottery reflected the Aztecs' mastery of the medium and their dedication to aesthetic beauty. The architectural achievements of the Aztecs were particularly impressive, with Tenochtitlan standing as a testament to their architectural prowess. The Aztecs constructed grand structures, including temples, palaces, and public buildings, which reflected their religious, political, and social aspirations. One of the most notable architectural marvels was the Templo Mayor, a massive temple complex dedicated to multiple deities. Rising above the cityscape, the Templo Mayor showcased the Aztecs' devotion to their gods and their mastery of architectural engineering. Tenochtitlan itself was an engineering marvel, built on an island in Lake Texcoco. It featured an intricate system of canals, causeways, and chinampas, artificial islands, which facilitated transportation, trade, and agricultural production. The city's layout and urban planning demonstrated the Aztecs' knowledge of engineering, hydraulics, and efficient use of space. Literature played a significant role in Aztec culture, and the Aztecs developed a sophisticated writing system known as Nahuatl. This pictographic script allowed them to record historical events, religious practices, and other cultural knowledge. 
Aztec codices, or books, were created using bark paper, and they contained pictorial representations combined with written text. The most famous surviving Aztec codex is the Codex Mendoza, which provides invaluable insights into Aztec society, tribute systems, and the organization of the empire. In addition to their writing system, the Aztecs valued oral tradition and storytelling. Their literature encompassed poetry, songs, and myths, which were passed down through generations. These oral traditions conveyed historical events, moral teachings, and the cosmological beliefs that shaped the Aztec worldview. The poetry of the Aztecs was rich in symbolism and metaphor, capturing the emotions, experiences, and aspirations of their people. Chapter 7 – Encounter with the Spanish, the Conquest and Fall of the Aztec Empire The arrival of the Spanish conquistadors, led by Hernán Cortés, in 1519 marked a transformative and tumultuous period in Aztec history. The encounter between the Aztecs and the Spanish would ultimately lead to the downfall of the Aztec civilization, forever altering the course of Mesoamerican history. When the Spanish first arrived on the shores of Mexico, the Aztecs initially believed them to be gods or divine beings due to their advanced technology, such as firearms and horses, and their fair complexion. The Aztec emperor, Moctezuma II, sought to appease the newcomers and welcomed Cortes and his men into the grand city of Tenochtitlan. Moctezuma believed that Cortes might be the god Quetzalcoatl returning as prophesied, which added to the sense of confusion and uncertainty. However, it did not take long for Cortes and his forces to reveal their true intentions. They sought to exploit the internal divisions within the Aztec Empire and acquire the wealth of the Aztec civilization for themselves and the Spanish crown. Cortes exploited alliances with indigenous groups who were dissatisfied with Aztec rule, thereby forming a coalition against the Aztecs. This coalition included rivals of the Aztecs, such as the Tlaxcalans and other subject states who resented Aztec dominance. As Cortes and his forces advanced, they encountered fierce resistance from the Aztecs, who were determined to defend their city and their way of life. The Aztecs mounted a spirited defense, but the Spanish, aided by their superior weaponry, tactics, and the support of their indigenous allies, gained the upper hand. They employed a combination of military force, psychological warfare, and manipulation to undermine Aztec authority and morale. In 1520, a significant turning point occurred in the form of the Noche Triste, Sad Night. During a tumultuous retreat from Tenochtitlan, Cortes and his forces suffered heavy losses as the Aztecs fiercely pursued them. The Spanish and their allies faced tremendous adversity, including the loss of soldiers, looting, and the destruction of their fleet of ships. However, Cortes managed to regroup, gather reinforcements, and plan a new assault on the city. In 1521, the Spanish launched a devastating siege on Tenochtitlan. The city, once known for its grandeur and power, faced a relentless assault that included fierce battles, famine, and disease. The Aztecs, weakened by internal strife and ravaged by smallpox, were unable to withstand the Spanish onslaught. After months of intense fighting, Tenochtitlan fell on August 13, 1521. The fall of Tenochtitlan marked the end of the Aztec civilization. With their capital in ruins and their power shattered, the Aztecs faced a bleak future. The Spanish established the colony of New Spain in its place, laying the foundation for centuries of European domination in the region. The conquest of the Aztec Empire by the Spanish had profound and lasting consequences. The introduction of European diseases such as smallpox led to a devastating demographic collapse among the indigenous population. The imposition of Spanish colonial rule brought significant changes to the political, social, and cultural fabric of Mesoamerica. The Aztec Empire, with its complex political structure, rich religious traditions, and vibrant cultural heritage, was forever lost. Chapter 8, Conclusion, The Enduring Legacy of the Aztec Civilization 
The Aztec civilization, with its rich cultural heritage, intricate societal structures, and remarkable achievements, stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of Mesoamerican civilizations. From their origins in the legendary land of Aslan to the establishment of their grand capital city of Tenochtitlan, the Aztecs forged a civilization that left an indelible mark on the history of the region. Despite their ultimate demise at the hands of the Spanish conquistadors, the Aztecs continue to captivate the imaginations of people worldwide, reminding us of the complexity, diversity, and vibrancy of the civilizations that thrived before European colonization. The Aztecs' cultural achievements encompassed a wide range of artistic, architectural, and literary endeavors. Their art, characterized by intricate stone carvings, vibrant murals, and exquisite pottery, revealed their religious beliefs, social practices, and deep connection with the natural world. The architectural marvels of Tenochtitlan, such as the Templo Mayor, stood as grand symbols of their engineering prowess and grand vision. Their writing system, Nahuatl, and their oral traditions preserved their history, mythology, and worldview, providing valuable insights into their society and beliefs. The political structure of the Aztec Empire was complex and hierarchical, with the Tilatoni at the pinnacle of power. The Triple Alliance, formed with the city-states of Texcoco and Tlacopan, solidified their dominance over the region and facilitated military campaigns and territorial expansion. The tribute system ensured a constant flow of resources and wealth into the empire, supporting its economic stability and political influence. Religion played a central role in Aztec life, with a complex pantheon of gods and goddesses, and a belief in cyclical cosmology. Elaborate rituals, including human sacrifices, were conducted to appease and honor the gods, maintaining cosmic balance and ensuring the prosperity of their society. The Aztecs' religious beliefs, rituals, and mythological narratives shaped their understanding of the world and their place within it. The encounter with the Spanish conquistadors in the early 16th century marked a turning point in Aztec history. Mistakenly viewing the Europeans as divine beings, the Aztecs initially welcomed them. However, the Spanish exploited internal divisions within the empire, eventually overthrowing the Aztec rule and establishing New Spain in its place. The fall of Tenochtitlan in 1521 represented the end of the Aztec civilization, leading to the profound changes brought about by Spanish colonization. Despite their defeat, the legacy of the Aztecs endures. Their cultural achievements continue to inspire awe and admiration, serving as a testament to the ingenuity, creativity, and sophistication of Mesoamerican civilizations. The ruins of Tenochtitlan and other archaeological sites provide tangible reminders of their grandeur and architectural prowess. The surviving Aztec codices, along with the accounts of Spanish chroniclers, offer valuable insights into their history, beliefs, and way of life. The study of the Aztec civilization allows us to appreciate the complexity and diversity of human societies and their capacity for artistic expression, architectural ingenuity, and complex religious systems. It serves as a reminder that history is shaped by a multitude of civilizations, each with its unique contributions and narratives. More information and facts. Part 1, Economy and Trade, the Foundation of Aztec Prosperity. The Aztec civilization boasted a sophisticated economic system that played a pivotal role in its growth, prosperity, and political dominance. This economic system was built upon a foundation of agriculture, trade, and tribute, which allowed the Aztecs to sustain their empire support a burgeoning population, and acquire valuable resources from both local and distant regions. Agriculture formed the backbone of the Aztec economy, providing sustenance and surplus for the empire. The Aztecs developed advanced agricultural techniques, most notably the creation of chinampas, or floating gardens. These chinampas were artificial islands built on shallow lake beds or swampy areas. By constructing rectangular plots of fertile soil anchored to the lake bed with willow trees, 
the Aztecs expanded their arable land and maximized crop yields. On these chinampas, they cultivated a wide array of crops, including maize, corn, beans, squash, tomatoes, peppers, and various fruits. The surplus agricultural production of the Aztecs fueled their trade networks, both within the empire and beyond. The Aztecs had an extensive trading network that connected various regions and facilitated the exchange of goods and resources. At the heart of this network was the grand city of Tenochtitlan, strategically located in the middle of Lake Texcoco, which provided access to both local and long-distance trade routes. Within the empire, trade was conducted through local markets, known as Tianquisli, where merchants and artisans sold their goods. These markets were bustling centers of economic activity, offering a wide variety of products, including textiles, pottery, obsidian tools, jewelry, and foodstuffs. The Aztecs utilized a barter system for exchange, with cacao beans serving as a form of currency for larger transactions. The Aztec trading network extended beyond their immediate territories, reaching neighboring regions and distant lands. Long-distance trade expeditions, led by specialized traders known as Paktika, ventured into different regions to acquire exotic goods and resources. These traders traveled great distances, establishing trade connections and networks with distant peoples. The Paktika traded for coveted items such as precious metals, feathers, gemstones, tropical bird feathers, obsidian, jade, and cotton. The acquisition of these exotic goods not only enriched the Aztec economy but also served to enhance their prestige and reinforce their political and cultural dominance. One of the most sought-after commodities in the Aztec trading network was cacao. Cacao beans were used as both a currency and a luxury item. They were highly valued for their use in the production of a frothy, bitter beverage consumed by the elite and as a key ingredient in rituals and ceremonies. The Aztecs recognized the economic potential of cacao and actively promoted its cultivation and trade. Tribute played a crucial role in the Aztec economy. The empire maintained a vast network of tributary states, which were required to pay tribute in the form of goods, resources, and labor. The tribute system ensured a steady flow of wealth and resources into the empire, supporting the ruling elite, the military, and the overall economic stability. Tribute collection was overseen by appointed officials who ensured that the tribute quotas were met and enforced. The Aztecs engaged in extensive maritime trade as well. Lake Texcoco and other surrounding lakes facilitated transportation and trade by means of canoes, allowing for the movement of goods and resources throughout the empire. Additionally, the Aztecs constructed a system of roads and causeways that connected different regions, facilitating overland trade and communication. Part 2, Education and Intellectual Pursuits, Nurturing the Aztec Mind The Aztecs held a deep appreciation for education and intellectual pursuits, recognizing the transformative power of knowledge in shaping individuals and society. Their well-developed educational system provided specialized training in various fields and played a crucial role in imparting knowledge, moral teachings, and practical skills to the younger generation. The Aztecs valued a wide range of disciplines, including poetry, astronomy, mathematics, and philosophy, which contributed to their intellectual and cultural achievements. The education system of the Aztecs encompassed institutions known as the Kalmakak and the Telpakali. The Kalmakak was a prestigious school attended by sons of nobles and members of the elite. It focused on providing a comprehensive education, preparing students for leadership roles in religion, administration, and warfare. The curriculum included the study of history, religious rituals, astronomy, astrology, calendrics, and philosophy. The Kalmakak aimed to develop not only intellectual abilities but also moral character and a sense of duty to the empire and its gods. The Talpakali, on the other hand, catered to the commoners and future warriors. 
It focused on imparting practical skills, physical training, military tactics, and discipline. Students at the Telpakali learned the art of warfare, including combat techniques, weaponry, and strategy. They also received instruction in agriculture, craftsmanship, and other practical trades. The Telpakali instilled a sense of duty, loyalty, and patriotism, preparing students for their roles as defenders of the empire. At both the Kalmakak and the Telpakali, education was primarily oral, with students learning through listening, memorization, and recitation. Writing was not widely taught, as the Aztecs relied on their pictographic script, Nahuatl, for record-keeping and communication. Poetry held a special place in Aztec culture, reflecting their deep appreciation for artistic expression and oral tradition. Skilled poets, known as Tlamatanaim, were highly esteemed and played an important role in society. They composed and recited poems that conveyed historical events, moral teachings, and the beauty of nature. Poetry was often performed in public gatherings and ceremonies, contributing to the cultural richness and preservation of Aztec traditions. Astronomy and astrology were integral to Aztec intellectual pursuits. The Aztecs observed the celestial bodies and developed a sophisticated understanding of celestial movements and the cosmos. They believed that celestial events, such as the positions of the stars and the movement of planets, influenced human affairs and shaped their destiny. Aztec priests and astronomers meticulously recorded and studied celestial phenomena, contributing to the development of accurate calendars, including the famous Aztec sunstone. Mathematics played a significant role in Aztec society, with practical applications in agriculture, commerce, and architecture. The Aztecs developed a vigesimal, base 20, numeral system, employing a combination of dots and lines to represent numbers. They used mathematical calculations for measuring land, determining the timing of agricultural activities, and conducting trade transactions. Their understanding of mathematics also influenced their architectural achievements, ensuring the precision and stability of structures such as temples and pyramids. Philosophical thought and contemplation were valued by the Aztecs, who pondered questions about the nature of existence, ethics, and human purpose. They explored philosophical concepts related to the nature of the divine, the role of humans in the cosmic order, and the nature of life and death. Aztec philosophy incorporated both practical and metaphysical aspects, seeking to understand the interconnectedness of all things and the harmony of the natural world. Part 3 – Social and Gender Roles – The Dynamics of Aztec Society Aztec society was characterized by a complex system of social roles and expectations that governed the lives of its members. Men and women had distinct responsibilities and participated in various spheres of life, contributing to the functioning and stability of Aztec society. While men were primarily engaged in warfare, agriculture, and trade, women played crucial roles in domestic life, child-rearing, and textile production. However, it is important to note that the roles and status of women in Aztec society were not limited to these traditional roles, as women could also hold positions of authority, become skilled artisans, or serve as priestesses. The Aztecs' matrilineal kinship system, where descent and inheritance were traced through the mother's line, also influenced social and gender dynamics. In Aztec society, men held primary responsibility for defending the empire through warfare and conquest. They served as warriors, engaging in military campaigns to expand the empire's territory and protect its interests. Warriors were highly esteemed, and military prowess was associated with prestige and honor. The Aztecs had a well-organized military hierarchy, with different ranks and specialized roles within the army. Agriculture, another essential aspect of Aztec society, was predominantly the domain of men. Men engaged in activities such as land cultivation, irrigation, and the harvesting of crops. 
They were responsible for ensuring the empire's food supply and played a significant role in sustaining the population. In addition, men were actively involved in trade, participating in local and long-distance commerce, and contributing to the economic prosperity of the empire. While men dominated certain spheres of life, women played indispensable roles in Aztec society, particularly in domestic life and child-rearing. Women were responsible for maintaining households, preparing meals, and ensuring the well-being of their families. They also played a crucial role in child-rearing, imparting cultural values, and overseeing the education of their children. Textile production was an essential economic activity in Aztec society, and women held expertise in this craft. They skillfully wove textiles using various materials, including cotton, agave fibers, and feathers, creating intricate designs and patterns. The textiles produced by Aztec women were highly valued and served as a form of wealth and status. Women's involvement in textile production extended beyond the household, as they also participated in trade and commerce, selling their textiles in local markets. While men primarily held positions of political and religious authority in Aztec society, women had opportunities for social and political influence. Women could inherit property and hold positions of power within their clans and lineages. In some cases, women could become rulers of city-states, known as siwakol, or take on important administrative roles. Women also played a vital role in the religious sphere, serving as priestesses and performing rituals dedicated to various deities. The Aztec social structure was influenced by a matrilineal kinship system, where descent and inheritance were traced through the mother's line. This meant that familial connections and inheritance were primarily determined through the mother's lineage, with a strong emphasis on the roles and status of women within families and communities. It is important to note that the roles and status of women in Aztec society were not limited to traditional gender roles. Women could pursue other avenues and excel in various fields, including becoming skilled artisans, artists, and healers. The Aztec society recognized and valued the contributions of women beyond domestic and reproductive roles. Part 4 – Medicine and Healing Practices – Nurturing the Body, Mind, and Spirit in Aztec Society The Aztecs possessed a complex and holistic understanding of medicine and healing, rooted in their belief in the interconnectedness of the body, mind, and spirit. Their approach to healthcare encompassed a wide range of practices, combining herbal remedies, spiritual rituals, and the expertise of specialized healers, known as tisidal. The Aztecs valued the maintenance of balance and harmony within the individual and their environment, recognizing the integral role of health and well-being in the overall functioning of their society. Central to Aztec medicine was the extensive knowledge of medicinal plants and herbs. The Aztecs had a vast array of botanical resources at their disposal, which they utilized for treating various illnesses and injuries. Their understanding of plant-based medicine was based on accumulated knowledge passed down through generations, empirical observations, and spiritual beliefs. The Aztecs recognized the potent therapeutic properties of numerous plants, including marigold, sage, cacao, agave, and chili peppers, among others. These plants were used in the form of poultices, ointments, infusions, and teas to alleviate symptoms, promote healing, and restore balance to the body. Healing practices in Aztec society involved more than simply administering herbal remedies. The Aztecs believed that illness and disease were caused by imbalances or disturbances in the cosmic order and the flow of energies. As such, spiritual rituals played a crucial role in the healing process. Rituals were conducted to communicate with the divine, seek their intervention, and restore harmony within the individual and the community. These rituals often included prayer, incantations, offerings, and the use of sacred objects or symbols. Specialized healers, known as tisidal, held the knowledge and skills required to diagnose and treat various ailments. 
The Tisital were highly respected members of society and underwent extensive training in medicinal practices and spiritual healing. They possessed a deep understanding of the medicinal properties of plants, the body's energy systems, and the connections between physical and spiritual well-being. The Tisital employed their knowledge to provide individualized treatment plans, often combining herbal remedies, physical therapies, and spiritual rituals to address the specific needs of their patients. The Aztecs viewed health and well-being as a multifaceted concept, encompassing not only physical but also mental and spiritual aspects. They recognized the importance of maintaining a harmonious relationship between the individual and their environment. Practices such as proper nutrition, hygiene, physical activity, and rest were valued for promoting overall well-being. The Aztecs believed that the state of one's mind and emotions influenced physical health, and emotional well-being was cultivated through practices such as meditation, introspection, and seeking balance in interpersonal relationships. In addition to herbal medicine and spiritual rituals, the Aztecs utilized physical therapies to address injuries and promote healing. Massage, bone setting, and acupuncture-like techniques were employed to alleviate pain, restore mobility, and encourage the body's natural healing processes. These physical therapies were based on a deep understanding of the body's anatomy and the principles of energy flow. The healing practices of the Aztecs were not limited to physical ailments but also encompassed mental and spiritual well-being. Mental health was recognized as an integral part of overall health, and the Aztecs developed strategies to address psychological distress. These strategies included counseling, support from family and community, and the use of music, dance, and artistic expression as therapeutic outlets. Part 5 – Social and Political Movements – The Dynamics of Resistance and Resilience in the Aztec Empire The history of the Aztec Empire is marked by various social and political movements that shaped its trajectory, reflecting the agency and resilience of the Aztec people in the face of adversity. These movements encompassed resistance against imperial rule, challenges to the nobility, and revolts against tribute obligations. Notable uprisings, such as the rebellion led by Quitlahuac against the Spanish after the fall of Tenochtitlan, demonstrate the dynamic nature of Aztec society and the capacity of its people to assert their rights and aspirations. Resistance against imperial rule was a recurring theme in the Aztec Empire. While the empire expanded through military conquest and the imposition of tribute obligations, there were instances of resistance from subject states and regions. The conquered peoples often resented Aztec dominance and sought to preserve their autonomy and cultural identities. Resistance movements emerged as a response to the imposition of tribute demands and the Aztecs' attempts to extend their influence. These movements were often characterized by armed conflict, alliances with neighboring states, and acts of sabotage or noncompliance. Challenges to the nobility also occurred within the Aztec social and political hierarchy. The Aztec nobility held positions of power and privilege, enjoying access to land, wealth, and resources. However, there were instances of discontent and challenges to their authority. Some commoners and lower-ranking nobles contested the privileges of the ruling elite, seeking to elevate their own social status or address grievances related to inequality or exploitation. These challenges sometimes manifested in political movements, demands for social reform, or calls for greater accountability and transparency. Revolt against tribute obligations was another significant aspect of social and political movements in the Aztec Empire. Tribute played a crucial role in sustaining the Aztec state, as subject states were required to provide goods, resources, and labor to the empire. However, the burden of tribute could become oppressive, leading to discontent and resistance. In some cases, subject states refused to pay tribute, initiated rebellions, or sought alliances with other groups to challenge Aztec authority. These revolts were driven by a desire for autonomy, economic self-sufficiency, 
or the preservation of local customs and traditions. One of the most notable social and political movements in Aztec history occurred after the fall of Tenochtitlan. Following the capture of the city by Hernán Cortés and his Spanish forces in 1521, a rebellion led by Cuitláhuac, the brother of Moctezuma II, emerged as a response to Spanish domination. Cuitláhuac rallied the Aztec people, forming a coalition with other indigenous groups, such as the Tlaxcalans, who resented Spanish rule. The rebellion demonstrated the resilience and determination of the Aztec people to resist foreign conquest, protect their cultural heritage, and reclaim their independence. Although ultimately unsuccessful in driving out the Spanish, the rebellion left a lasting legacy of resistance and defiance against colonial oppression. The social and political movements within the Aztec Empire highlight the diverse aspirations, grievances, and agency of its people. These movements reveal a dynamic and evolving society, where individuals and groups asserted their rights, challenged existing power structures, and sought to shape their own destinies. They underscore the complexity of Aztec society and the ongoing negotiations and contestations that shaped its political landscape. We've now reached the end of our journey today, thank you for letting the tales of old be your backdrop and remember, history isn't just about the past, it's about understanding our present and shaping our future.